I get a lot of my sense of humor from my dad. I remember when I was little, whenever my dad would have keys in his hand, he would say, is this the key to your heart? And then he'd jab me in the chest with it. <laughs> True story. First time my dad ever saw me perform uh, stand-up, he came up to me afterwards and said, Ryan, I've never been prouder of you than when I saw you up there on stage. And I thought to myself, that's great. I just wish I knew that before I spent $140,000 on law school. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is true. I am a lawyer. Uh, I've thought about what that means. Being a lawyer means to me that if there was an apocalyptic event and we all had to rebuild civilization from scratch, I would have no usable skills whatsoever. <laughs> I know how to take a deposition. That's pretty much the extent of it for me. Uh, I'm not just a lawyer, I'm in fact a Jewish lawyer. Uh, it is the culmination of a lifelong dream of mine. I remember when I was little saying, Mommy, when I grow up, I want to be a stereotype. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I used to date a lot. I tried the online dating thing for a while. Uh, online dating was great for me because it was the perfect combination of two of my strongest character characteristics, social ineptitude and internet addiction. <laughs> Uh, people put the weirdest things in their, in their online profiles. Uh, a lot of women out there looking for their partner in crime. I dated one of these. Uh, things went pretty well until I think it was our third date, which is when our meth lab blew up. <laughs> Another one you see a lot is uh, if, if a woman has kids, she'll put in her profile, you know, I have three kids and they mean the world to me. I have one child and he's the most important thing in my life. Just once I want to see, I have two kids and uh, I can take them or leave them. <laughs> it's negotiable. How do you feel about kids? We'll talk, we'll talk. Uh, the, one, the only one that really annoys me though is people who put down, I like to work hard and I like to play hard. Because in my mind, play should not be hard. If you're in the middle of a game of Connect Four and you're sweating, <laughs> you need to reread the instructions because you're doing it wrong. And people who like to play hard, their idea of play is like ocean kayaking. Okay, ocean kayaking is not play. If you don't understand why, picture two Inuit hunters up near the Arctic Circle searching for harp seal. And one turns to the other and says, I am really enjoying this date. And I'm really working the cardio. No, that never happened, because ocean kayaking is not play. In fact, I would go farther to say that if your idea of play is appropriating the subsistence survival techniques of an underrepresented minority, you're a little racially insensitive. <laughs> what are you planning on doing for your second date? Are you gonna go down to the plantation and pick cotton for 18 hours? Racists. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I was on J Date for a while, but I quit that site. Too many Jews. <laughs> I can say that I'm Jewish. You're allowed to laugh at it, because I said it. If you feel guilty for laughing at it, that's okay too. As a Jew, the only thing I like more than making you laugh is making you feel guilty. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You get it. I, I remember I was on a date with this woman on J-Date, and she was Chinese-American, and I remember sitting down across from her and saying, what are you doing on J-Date? And she said, well, I like to date Jewish guys, and I'm better to date than Jewish women, because Jewish women are really materialistic, and all they care about is money. And I said, you know, you might have better luck with Jewish guys if you want an anti-Semite. <laughs> something to think about. Something to think about. Uh, I remember I, I, I met this um, one woman at a bar, and I approached her and said, hi, my name is Ryan. That's my pickup line. <laughs> and she looked me up and down and she, she said, I could do a lot better than you. And I looked back at her and I said, no, I really don't think you can. <laughs> we dated for about three months after that. Uh, it was problematic because I love to gamble and she would say, you shouldn't gamble. Gambling is a sin against God. And I said, I think you're thinking of masturbation. Masturbation is a sin against God. It's easy to confuse the two. I've been thrown out of a number of casinos. <laughs> they say what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Apparently it also stays on the National Sex Offender Registry. <laughs> Just an FYI. 
Yeah. I drive a lot. Uh, I used to live in New York City, now I live in Vermont. Uh, let me ask you, have you ever been driving uh, and you're so bored with driving that you find yourself starting vendettas with other drivers just to pass the time? <laughs> like some guy in an SUV cuts you off so you tailgate him for 10 miles, then he pulls into a rest stop and you follow him into the rest stop, then when he leaves his car you let the air out of his tires. You guys do that too? Okay, good. I don't feel so bad. Um, there's this one billboard I pass a lot. It's called, uh, it's for, for a place called the Love Boutique in Connecticut, it's spelled L-U-V. And in the corner, it says, come in for 99 cent Mondays. And every time I pass it, I think to myself, what do you get for 99 cents on Monday? And I figure it can't be that good a deal because whatever you get for 99 cents, the cream to make it go away costs like 40 bucks. <laughs> So I lived in Vermont for about a year, I was in New York City before that, and I know I will never truly be a Vermonter, but ever since I've gotten there, I have noticed that my attitude is changing, and I am, I'm becoming a different person, my, my mind, the things I think. For example, all of a sudden, Massachusetts drivers have really started to piss me off. <laughs> I knew that one worked in Vermont, and I just guessed it would work in New Hampshire. <laughs> what are the odds? Uh, yeah, a friend of mine once asked uh, if Vermont Ryan and New York City Ryan got into a fight, who do you think would win? And that was a really hard question, because Vermont Ryan is in a lot better shape, but New York City Ryan had a lot more repressed rage. <laughs> and I would like to think that Vermont Ryan would just walk away. But New York City Ryan was not above attacking someone from behind. <laughs> so it was a bit of a wash. I don't miss a lot about New York City. Uh, I, I think one thing I do miss is that there are a lot of very, very beautiful women in New York City. Um, don't get me wrong, Vermont produces more than its share of beautiful women as well. I've met them after they moved to New York City. <laughs> yeah. I can tell that joke because we're in New Hampshire. They don't like that joke in Vermont. Um, yeah, and uh, one thing I, I don't, I, 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 another thing about New York is, in New York, uh, all the people there wear like six inch heels. You do not see that in Vermont. No one in Vermont wears six inch heels. Uh, but I will tell you, since I've moved there, my back hurts a lot less. <laughs> so that's nice. Uh, I think I can really sum up the experience. I'll leave you with this little anecdote. I was walking along one day, and I was all alone, and I heard a noise behind me. I turned around, and there's a deer. It's like three feet away from me. And I just had no idea what to do in this situation. I was completely unprepared for this situation. So I just, I just dug down into my, into my years of instinct as a New Yorker, and I gave it my wallet. <laughs> Thank you everyone, I'm Ryan Thank you very much.